Hi guys, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're solving the Day 7 project in 30 Days of Python. We're going to be working with this movie set and we're going to be working with the budgets of these movies. As you can see, we've got the movies list here and that is a list that contains tuples. Each tuple contains information about a movie title and the budget that was spent on that movie. Uh, so, for example, the Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind spent this amount of US dollars in production. And the Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, however, spent a whopping $379 million, which I still can't really believe. Uh, and apparently, I've read some places uh, suggest that they spent much more than that. So, yeah. Uh, give me some of that instead. Uh, so the first uh, part of our project uh, requires that we calculate the average budget of all the movies in our data set. So what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, what the average out of all of these numbers here. Remember that our programs are about getting data, processing the data, and then outputting data. And here we've already got the data, so now what we have to do is we have to think of these pieces of data as individual items that we're going to process. And what we want to do, therefore, is find a way to access each of these items and find a way or think of a way that we can use individual items like that in order to calculate an average. And this is a very common thing. You may have done it in previous exercises like yesterday. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add them all up and then divide the number that we get by how many movies we've got. So I'm going to create a variable called total budget. And this is going to be zero initially. And now I'm going to go through all of the movies and we're going to add to this variable that is initially zero each budget from each movie. So I'm just going to scroll down. You're going to see this disappear at the top, but I'm just working down here. We don't need to be looking at the data all the time. So in order to do the for loop, we're going to do for movie in movies. And what we're doing here again is we are creating a new variable movie that is going to be the variable name for each tuple as we go through them. As we go through them, we can access the budget of a movie and we can add that budget to this variable. Notice that just because this for loop here repeats 10 times, let's say, that doesn't affect this variable at all. This variable is still static. It's only defined once. So we'll do total budget equal and then total budget plus and now we have to access the budget of the movie. Notice that movie is each item in the movies list and therefore movie is a tuple. And the next time that the loop runs, it will be this tuple and then the one after it'll be this one. In every occasion, the budget is the second item of the tuple. So we want to add down here, movie one. We're accessing the index one or the second element of the movie tuple. And we're adding that to the total budget. The next time this runs, total budget will now contain a number, not zero. And we're going to add that number to the second movie's budget. And we're going to put that back into total budget. And then we're going to do that over and over so that total budget at the end contains the sum of all elements. Now, once we've got that, we need to find out how many movies we have. And we can do that with the len function. Len is going to tell us the amount of items in a collection. And because we've got the movies list and it has a tuple per movie, by getting the length of movies, we're going to know how many movies we've got. And so we'll do average budget is equal to total budget divided by the len of movies. For example, a million divided by 10 if we have 10 movies. So now we have the average budget. We have completed the first point of the project. Now we have to go out and print every movie that has a budget higher than the average. And so any movie that is uh, has a higher budget than this number that we've calculated here. In order to do this, we're going to have to go through the movies again so that we can check each one against the average. So we will create another for loop. Notice that I'm using the same variable name, but that's totally fine because whenever you create a new for loop, this variable here will get the value of the first item in the list 
and then as the loop repeats it will move on to the second item and so forth. So this is totally okay. Now as we go through each movie we want to check each movie against the average budget and how we do checks is of course with if statements. So we'll do if the movie's budget which we know is the second item in the tuple is greater than the average budget then we know that this movie is over the average and we want to print it out. Because we want to print out the movie and by how much it went over budget, we probably want to calculate by how much it went over budget at this point. Uh, so we'll create a new variable called over average cost, just to give it a name. This is a pretty tricky variable to give a name to. And this is going to be the budget take away the average budget. What this is going to give us is by how much this movie went over the average. Now that we've got this, we can print out a nice string that says this movie cost this amount and that was x over average. And so we will call the print function and we will use an f string to put movie 0, which is the name of the movie. Then we're going to type how much it cost. And then we're going to say that that is the over average cost over average. So notice that here I am interpolating three variables into the string. We're interpolating movie 0, which is the name, movie 1, which is the budget, and then the over average cost, which is this variable we define here that tells us by how much we went over average. At this point, we probably want to put a you know full stop at the end and the dollar symbols in front of our currencies as well. And notice that this one has gone into this line, a bit strange there, but this is all okay. Uh, now you may want to run your code. This is something that probably we should have done earlier on as well to test it out. Um, but you can see that we get Pirates of the Caribbean or Stranger Tides cost 379 million, and that's 188 million more than the average for this data set, and so on with these other movies. I purposefully went for some of the most expensive movies of all time so that you guys could see how this is working. But of course, if you have a larger data set, then this could become a bit more interesting as well. Now, finally, for point three, we need to print out how many movies spent more than the average you calculated. And so if this if statement runs, that tells you that the movie that you were currently on in this loop went over the average budget for the data set. And you want to count how many movies did that. And so there are two main ways that we can do that. The first way is that we can create a new variable to keep track of how many movies have gone over budget. And we could add one to that variable inside this if statement. So we could do something like this. Over average count starts at zero. And then in the if statement, we add one to it. So we say over average count equal over average count plus one. Notice that this can be quite confusing, especially in the beginning when you're starting to code, and because you have to start keeping track of multiple things that are going on at the same time. And this variable is one more thing to keep track of. And um, but here, all we're doing is every time the if statement runs, we know we are in a movie that went over the average, we add one to the variable. And at the end, that variable should contain a number equal to the number of times this if statement evaluated to true. And uh, so that is an option and totally valid option. And if you just want to print the number of movies that go over the average for the data set, and that's it, you never want to do anything else with the movies, then this is probably the best option. It's very straightforward and simple once you can once you think about it. And um, but there is a second option that gives you more flexibility in the long term. And that is to put all of these movies that have gone over the average for the data set into their own list so that you can then potentially do some more processing on them if you want. And so we're going to do that just now because this is a bit too simple. We want to do the more full fledged approach. So what we'll do is just up here to keep the variable definitions in one place. So it's easier to see where they are. And we're going to define an empty list. That's going to be the high budget movies. And that's going to be an empty list. Note that we can't define this variable up there with the others because obviously it depends on this total budget that's being calculated down there. Now that we have this empty list, what we can do is in here, instead of adding one to this variable, we can append to this empty list. So we'll say high budget movies dot append 
movie. And that is going to add all the movie data, which I know at the moment is just the title and the budget, but we could potentially have more, into this list. Once we've got that, then at the end here, we can print out how many movies spent more than the average just by accessing the length property of this list. So we can print and say, there were, and inside the curly braces for interpolation, we can type in the expression, which is calculating the length of the high budget movies, movies with over average budgets. Now, if you wanted to do more stuff with these high budget movies, you can do that. And that's fine. You can totally do that because you've got all their data in this list, which is separate from the other list. And so now if that's something that you could use, which the other approach did not allow. All right. So let's run this and see what happens. You can see that we print out four different movies and their information. And at the end, we print that there were four movies with over average budgets. Now, notice that the dollar amounts here are pretty difficult to read. It's difficult to tell how many zeros there are, whether this is hundreds of millions or, or thousands of millions. And so there is a better way of printing this out using the Python special formatting syntax, uh, which is that after the number that you're printing, but still inside the curly braces, you can put a colon. And what this means is you are about to give Python some formatting information. And here we're going to put a comma. And what that means is we want to separate and uh, the every three digits of this number with a comma. So now if we run this, you'll see that the millions are much easier to see. That's what the actors of some of these movies certainly witnessed. All right, so there's a lot of extra stuff that we can do in this project. That's all detailed in our walkthrough um, blog post that you can access in the link below in the description. All right, we've got some extra stuff that we can do in this project. And the extra work that I'd recommend you tackle is to ask the user and allow them to add more movies to the data set before running your calculations. We're not going to cover how to do that in this video. That's going to be in the blog post, the solution walkthrough over there. So if you want to learn more about how we would tackle the extra part of this project, do read the blog post link down below in the description for more information. Other than that, that's really it. This project is a fair bit longer than the previous ones we tried. So really well done for getting this far. I hope you have completed this project and I hope you've enjoyed going through and analyzing this movie data. This project will have helped cement your knowledge of the first week, but obviously as you go through the next few weeks, you may always forget things that you've learned earlier on, and that's totally fine. You can always go back and read it again or refresh your memory whenever you need to. That's one of the beauties of having all this content out there ready for you to read. But now you're ready for week two, so let's do that tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.